So a lot just happened while I was putting the drawers in and prep to put a top coat on it. Um, I'm gonna show you what happened and then I think I have to put this project away. There's a new thrift store in my area and the first time I went, I landed my eyes on this beauty. It's a 1947 buffet. I can see it as a buffet in a dining room or even a TV stand. And at $50, you could bet I bought it. And as usual, I brought it home and started to see all the damage on it I didn't realize in the store. I knew about the damage on top. Something is burned through the finish or there's water damage on it. But everywhere I look, I'm finding chunks of missing veneer and dings. It's a hot mess. This is what bothered me the most. There's trim on the drawer that is pulling away and a part of it is missing. And I'm not quite sure I'll be able to reattach that properly. But as usual, the first thing I did was remove the hardware because I wanna give this piece a really good cleaning. This hardware is glorious. It's what caught my attention initially. So I will definitely be reusing it. I thoroughly vacuumed the piece and then washed it with warm water and Dawn dish detergent, cleaned it with fresh water, and I was ready to go. The two things I want to address first are these repairs. It's buckling. I think I need to take that little nail out and then secure this with glue. Down here, same thing. I think that nail is in an okay place, but I do need to glue that back together. And then this is missing a little piece that I'll need to reform. There we go. All right. All right, I put some tape above and I put some tape below because the first thing I need to do is apply this to one side. So I'm going to get this, spray it, so it ends up on this part. Okay. Then I'm going to take this and just get it on the back side of this. I guess this should be lying down. All right. Okay. Hold it for a minute. The spray is supposed to accelerate the adhesion and the curing. All right, it's been a minute, and this is why I put the tape above and below to catch that kind of stuff. But y'all, it appears to be nice and solid. Now, I don't know if this is gonna be difficult peeling the tape up because it has a little bit of glue there. Um, I brought down an X-Acto blade. I'm going to slice it here and here to release that tape. But other than that, I think this worked beautifully. Here we go with the next one. Now I'm going to use quick wood to mold and replace the area that's missing here. It's a two-part epoxy. Now this hardens very quickly. I have to move quickly. is pretty good as far as shape is concerned. 
Then I use some Bondo as well as some wood filler to fill in those areas of missing veneer and all of those scratches. I mean, look at this, poor thing. Look guys, <laughs> uh, it's already bleeding into the filler. Holy Toledo. I knew this was a bleeder, but it's the first time I've experienced bleeding in the wood filler. Wow. Using a foam abrasive pad and my surf prep, I sanded all the repairs I had made, including the wood filler where all those finishing nails were indented on the drawers. And then I took 180 grit sandpaper and my DeWalt sander and started sanding the top. I wanted to see if I could sand through the damage and make the surface smooth again. And as you can see, I was very successful in removing whatever that was. I just had to sand down to bare wood. But these scratches, you're gonna see, I can't sand them out, they're deep. And I don't want to sand too aggressively because I know that this is a veneered top. So I'm eventually going to have to go back with some wood filler and sand again. So I just discovered something very odd. There's this dip here as if this piece has sunk. But when I look around, it looks like everything is sealed here. It's not like it has shifted down. And when you look inside, there's no indication that this has slipped down. It is so bizarre. <laughs> I don't understand it. I went and got some painter sticks from down in the basement, trimmed them on my miter saw. And I think what I'm just gonna do is put one on both this side as well as the other. I think once it's primed and painted, uh, it'll look like it was always there. Okay. Don't do that. I'm gonna put a lot of glue on and then I'm gonna put some short bride nails in there. This is what I got um, for a staple gun, but it also has very short brad nails. I can't remember how long they are, but um, I'm gonna put one here and one here. I'll make these more flush with my hammer before I sand and prime and paint that area. But I'm gonna go ahead and put the other one on on the other side. I started the process of putting the first coat of primer on. I started with the drawers and then went on to the base. Look at all the bleeding from that first coat. Woo, it was a bleeder. especially those inner cabinets. I knew they would be. <laughs> Y'all, it took, in some places, four coats of Zinzerbin shellac base primer. And this thing is finally ready. I've sanded it smooth. It's ready to be painted, but I noticed some gaps and I'm going to be using some paintable caulk to fill in those gaps. I have a wet rag paper towel that I've wet with water and I just run that across 
it fills the area and wipes off the excess. Okay, I'm gonna fill in that. That looks so much better. Once I had removed all the excess and it had dried, it was ready for paint. I pulled out my Erlex 5500 and proceeded to spray the piece. It's been a couple of days I've had to step away from this piece. There are two coats of paint on the buffet, and for the most part, it's going to be enough. I can tell this inner cabinet definitely needs another coat. Um, it's evident to me that the areas where the drawers fit in need some more paint too. So what I'm gonna do is spray it one more time with the drawers inside. And then I will pull them out and hand paint the top and sides of the drawers and any other areas that I missed with the drawers being inside. The piece is really turning out pretty. I wish I had been able to save the top and expose that as wood and maybe I could have, but guys, I just don't have the time. And again, as I've often said, this piece was on the market unpainted for a very long time and no one in my market wanted it that way. So hopefully with a coat of paint, you won't hate me and it'll be more marketable. It's time to put a top coat on the buffet. Valspar's cabinet and furniture paint, which is what I used, has a built-in top coat. My personal experience, however, has been that when I paint a dark color, like the caviar, if I don't put a top coat on it, then when I touch it, I seem to leave what looks like dusty fingerprints on it. I don't know if it's oil from my skin, but I don't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and probably just spray one good coat of this top coat. When you put a top coat on top of a dark color, you want to tint the top coat, which is why I left a little bit of black paint in there. It helps avoid any streakiness or haziness. By the way, I'm using Bayer's polyurethane in a matte finish. So I'll see you outside. So a lot just happened while I was putting the drawers in and prep to put a top coat on it. Um, I'm gonna show you what happened and then I think I have to put this project away. First of all, as I was putting the drawers in, I could see underneath each drawer or on top of the drawers, I was scraping paint, even though I checked them before painting. So I pulled them out, sanded underneath. See, look, that's a terrible one right there. And as I was sanding them underneath, this drawer had two pieces of veneer come off. I'm feeling very discouraged today. So I think I'm gonna walk away for a few days. Um, I've got a long weekend at the beach before school starts and I need it. It's been 10 days since I put her in the timeout corner. I've since been to the beach and I've been back at school for a week and it's time that I pull her back out and fix her. So this is what I'm going to do today. I think this paint chipping, scratching off, I, at first I thought maybe it was from some white primer that got under this drawer, which is why I was sanding it, which caused this drawer to lose some of its veneer. What I'm gonna do is take these out. I'm going to sand the top of each of these areas where the drawer slides back on top of. 
I'm going to sand it to remove all of that white primer. If I need to touch up the areas with just black paint, I will do that. But I feel as if I need to remove any white primer that will potentially be exposed by the scraping of the drawers. Um, in addition to that, I have the veneer pieces that broke off here. I will glue that, those back on, lightly sand, fill with wood filler if I have to, and kind of patch that paint up. This one looks really good. It's filled nicely with wood filler, and that's ready for a coat of paint. So that side looks great. Um, I'm ready to proceed. The other side had still had a bit of a crack, so I'll put some more wood filler in it. I'm waiting for it to dry. I will hand sand it just like I did um, with these. I'm going to wipe these down really well with a tack cloth, and then I'm going to apply one more coat of paint to the front and the top. When that is dry, I'm going to add a top coat. I'm finally in the home stretch. So I'm just gonna put on one good coat that's been tinted with the caviar black paint, and then I'll be ready to bring it inside, add the hardware, and get it staged for photos. One of the things that I fell in love with immediately when I first saw this in the thrift store was its beautiful hardware. I was surprised it didn't clean up very well, so I ended up spraying three very light coats of Krylon's metallic gold leaf spray paint, and I think they're absolutely beautiful. So with this last piece of hardware, I'm done, and I'm really glad this was a labor of love. So I'm anxious for you to see it. Let me know what you think in the comments below.